I often get asked why I use FreeBSD and why I prefer it. And I thought I'd answer it by letting other people answer it first, and then I'll give my opinion at the end. Many people ask why they should use FreeBSD and why I chose FreeBSD. I thought I'd let other people answer that question and give their opinions and their points. First up is Russell, and he says, I use FreeBSD because I like a challenge. Using FreeBSD has forced me to learn and know things at a much lower level compared to using a mainstream Linux distribution. The handbook is excellent and add everything you need to get a system up and running. FreeBSD is entirely community driven and the C, C++ compiler and toolchain are built into the OS. FreeBSD has the build tools at your fingertips. And I can't argue with that. Next, Moti says, Smaller dev base means better code and more stable patches and releases. Ports package management is superior to apt and yum. There are cons too. Higher learning curve, slower bug fixes, much less hardware support than Linux, and slightly addictive. High learning curve, I would disagree with. It's just a different operating system. The learning curve would be the same going from a Windows user to Linux as it would be from Windows to FreeBSD. The learning curve for a Linux user going to FreeBSD would be much lower. Slower bug fixes? Well, there is a certain maybe to that. Uh, critical bug fixes? No, actually the uh, security team are really quick off the mark when it comes to uh, fixing critical problems. Other bug fixes, maybe a little bit slower than Linux, but you remember it's a much smaller developer base. There's much less hardware support. Uh, would it, again, it depends. The newer stuff, maybe, but if you're going to buy hardware for FreeBSD, uh, then you shop around. And if you pick up ones which are recommended in the FreeBSD hardware database, you guaranteed it for it to work. And slightly addictive, yes. I uh, I can't disagree with that. Marmalak, interesting name, says, For me, FreeBSD is a pleasure to use. I'm no stranger to Linux, and I have a favourite distro, but I often go for BSD when I can because I usually find it easier to manage, more lightweight and simple, but just as powerful. In other words, it's most convenient. As they say, the system is clean and stable. I first learned how to really admin and manage a Unix-based system with FreeBSD when I was a teen. Prior to that, I used Linux for a couple of years, but hardly learned anything except how to use wizards to set things up. And they'd get set up wrong, too. BSD isn't as much of a pain in the uh, proverbial bottom to customise. Tweak and tinker all you want. It's perfect for someone who wants to learn more about system administration. You can do all kinds of stuff on it too. Lots of software available. Not as much software and hardware support as Linux. Again, that's something which I suppose you could argue is true. But it really holds its own compared to like 99% of all OSs. Also, don't forget, GNU Linux is essentially based on the fundamental Unix design, which is what BSD literally is. Personally, I think it'll help you grow as a person. MS Bic says... I am a hobbyist, not an advanced user. So for my POV, things don't change rapidly. From a user perspective, most of what I learned 10 to 12 years ago is still relevant. You have one to two file systems, a single sound subsystem. Strict separation between the system and third party software. Both open and free installations are minimal with no bloat. And that is true. You can make FreeBSD what you want it to be. Stan Hanks says, BSD is an actual, factual operating system. It was built with intent by a team of some of the best computer scientists in the world, all of whom went on to have distinguished careers over a long period of time. It was built on the bones of the original V6, V7 Unix from Bell Labs, which was also built by CS researchers trying to solve for a minimal footprint OS that gave maximal performance. Linux, on the other hand, more or less, accreted like a coral reef. The first poly was Linus, Torvalds, deciding that with BSD386 no longer available, he wanted an OS that gave a Unix-like experience on commodity Intel 386 hardware. 
So we wrote a kernel and shared it, and the accretion started. More kernel ads by others, then GNU open source replacement for the Unix command stack, and we were off to the races. And since it was open source, the inevitable diaspora into a maze of little twisty distros all the same. Next is stability. See above. Sam Leffler, one of the architects of the original 4.2 BSD, is still making the occasional commit. That's 30 years of continuity versus whoever decides to make a commit to your favorite Linux distro. The core of the OS is very, very stable. There are close to zero bugs ever. Number three, performance. BSD was written to perform really well on really, well, you know, poopy hardware. It was written in a time when that mattered, by people who understood that it mattered, and most importantly, how to really do that. Linux, not so much. Number four, code bloat. That thing I like so much about Ubuntu, how can I take a USB and get it to boot on damn near anything? Recognize all the devices and give me reasonably good performance on them. Remember that? Know what else does that? Windows. Know why? They've got drivers for everything and that's ever been built in every possible configuration all loaded all the time, every time. That's A, unsustainable and B, very fragile and insecure as a result, just like Windows. You can get, maybe, drivers for most devices for BSD distributions, but the usual thing you do is boot a generic kernel, look at the dmessage output, figure out what devices are actually present, write a config file with just those devices present, build a new kernel, and reboot. Simple. Nothing loaded you don't actually have. No weird code interactions waiting to bite you. Not to mention being really, really small. Number five. Much much better networking and IPC. It's a combination of the age, stability and period in which it was written, but the 4BSD TCP IP stack is literally as good as it gets. Number six, PF versus IP tables. Yeah, don't even get me started there. There's only one best, and it's not IP tables. Number seven, portability. Recall the raison d'etre for Linux. Linus wanted a Unix-like experience on Commodity x86 hardware. On the other hand, BSD has been ported to damn near every important processor since 1980. Next, Jacob says, number one, superior security in general and high performance and reliability of server-side services. Far superior to Linux in most benchmark tests. Number two, totally open source except some proprietary drivers uh, like NVIDIA. Number three is entire system and programs from ports are compilable and highly configurable. Number four, many Windows managers are available. I recommend KDE, but for less powerful machines, XSCE, etc. Number five, wide hardware compatibility. Highly comparable with Linux, sometimes even better. IE's experience is different from the previous ones, you see. It can depends on what your hardware you're wanting. Essential software available, such as Mozilla Firefox, Opera, Iridium, Caligra Office, OpenOffice, LibreOffice, VirtualBox, KDevelop, Qt Creator, Caden Live, uh, some games, uh, and he lists 0AD, flight simulators, etc., and more than 30,000 ports to download. Number seven. Binary compatibility with Linux. It says you can run almost every Linux program without emulation. Number eight. Suitable for web server, mail, firewall, proxy, and workstation. Jacob says it's a good choice for pre-production, testing, and development like he does. Number nine. Z file system native support is a big advantage. And it's suitable for data centers. Number ten. It's well documented so everybody can learn and configure. Number eleven. Intel dedicated staff to ensure free BSD compatibility. Number 12, it's completely usable in console only mode. And that is true. So, why do I use, advocate, and love free BSD? Well, of all the reasons that I read out previously, and I've said in previous videos as well, the same reasons, but I want to list some different ones. And 
Firstly, I'd say, number one, change happens when it needs to rather than because someone else wants it to. Now, there is a, a, I'm going to say, an element within the Linux uh, development community which um, gets pushed along really with a with a flowing tide that's usually uh, instigated not by themselves but someone higher up uh, or uh, whatever the latest fad might be for whichever latest add-on might be wanted. So, I mean, I know it's a contentious issue, but say, for instance, um, System D. <laughs> System D. Um, you either don't care, you either like it, or you fundamentally uh, disapprove and uh, dislike it greatly, which uh, I fall into the latter camp. It's one example, and Linux has a tendency to flip-flop between different ideas, different uh, philosophies, different people... Um, rowing in different directions and so you can find yourself going with the tide and then only for the tide to change directions so with freebsd uh you don't get that it's very much community and consensus driven you don't uh, have the latest fads you don't have um the project being pushed left and right because someone somewhere with a lot of clout and swear says, oh, the, we want this one in uh, this release, we want to do this now. No, you don't get that. So it's a very slow and incremental way of changing. Now, a lot of people, perhaps from uh, the Linux world, who may think, oh, it's, uh, it's very slow, nothing ever happens, and uh, nothing ever changes, is because they're not looking at it in the same way as the FreeBSD community. It's change because you have to, not because you want to. And I think that's a great thing. As someone said in the previous reasons, whatever you learn 10 or 12 years ago in FreeBSD is still applicable today. And I think that's uh, a fantastic thing. There are new technologies that get introduced there, for instance, ZFS, etc. But the fundamental core of the OS remains the same. And if it works, why not? You know, keep reinventing the wheel all the time. You're going to have a lot of redundant wheels. Anyway, next... The community will help, but not belittle you. Now it's now it's um it's almost like an urban legend at this moment in time where FreeBSD is known for its um I don't know shall we say standoffish community, where people, if you ask any question, they're going to say you know RTFM and they're going to tell you to go away or learn or come back when you got a skill. And I have never experienced that when I started out with FreeBSD. And even now, you know, you, no one ever knows everything, and uh, the true in my case. I've used FreeBS Need now for, I don't know, was it 13 years, 14 years? I use it exclusively, and I still uh, find myself thinking, oh, how do I do that? I can't remember. And so when you ask, you get the answers. There's no one is ever rude. Well, not to my front face, anyway. They probably say it behind my back. No, they don't. But no one is ever rude. No one ever says, no, 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 go and read the manual or anything, or come back later. No one ever does that. And they certainly will not put you down if you have a question which you need answering. I can't say the same for all uh, OS communities. Um, I don't frequent the Windows one. I don't frequent the Linux ones. But I have heard, and again, this, is, this may be um, anecdotal evidence, but I've heard from uh, users who uh, and viewers on my channel which... They suggest that perhaps um, they find the FreeBSD community refreshingly calm rather than the heated uh, bedlam which they may experience when they ask a question that may not be uh, to everyone's liking. I don't know. I can't answer that. I, maybe that's true. Maybe it isn't. So I don't know. But my experience is the community will help but not belittle you, even at any level of experience where you have a question. Next it's free from corporate interference and control. Now, this is an important one, um, perhaps more important than you think. There are, a, in the Linux world, there's a lot of large corporate sponsors and code contributors, and they, well, let's just say they, for their kindness, they require some things back, or um, maybe some things put in, in or uh, whatever it may be for their contribution. And these large companies and corporations, well, they perhaps have a more, they, they it's, it's not purely altruistic. They uh, perhaps want something in return. And so let me just say that uh, 
what the users may want is not necessarily what the big corporations want, and uh, so uh, the needs of the users perhaps are, um, well, you know, uh, trodden on. Well, I'll put it uh, no further than that. With FreeBSD, we don't get that. Um, people who donate to the FreeBSD Foundation so they can sponsor a very important uh, projects for the FreeBSD. They don't donate thinking they're going to get anything back in return. They donate because they either use the code or recognize the code as being important and want to genuinely, genuinely contribute to it with no strings attached. Like I say, I, I can't say for Linux um, if that's the case. It may be, may not be, I don't know. But for FreeBSD, it's uh, how it works is... Uh, the, they really do want to sponsor. So when someone contributes to uh, FreeBSD in code or, the f or uh, time or money, they do it out for, yes, they will get something back. They're going to get better code, really, for their own products. But they're not doing it to push it for any agenda or any particular direction. And I think that's refreshing. So, uh, yeah, you got to hand it for them. They, uh, it's a truly democratic and community-driven OS. Number four, feeding yourself and not being spoon-fed. Well, yes. I mean, this is, um, it kind of ties in with number five, where it grows as you grow and the limits being yourself. FreeBSD, like the early days of um, home computing, you know when you, you used to switch on your 8-bit computer and it would just sit there and uh, present you with a uh, flashing icon or um, a cursor and wait an input. And you had to pick up the manual and, learn and you go through the basics but as you did that you was teaching yourself you were actually learning not only the internal yeah you were learning the basics of course but then as you went on you would you would pick up more tips and it would sink in and next time when you start the computer up you perhaps wouldn't need to look at the manual because you'd learned the commands well, FreeBSD is like that. You learn the commands. You learn the little thing. You don't learn everything. You know, everything's not going to go in. But you learn the basic commands. And as you do, you'll find yourself going a bit deeper and learning more about your system and how to interact with it and what part does this and does that wonderful tool for learning. And what it means by feeding yourself and not being spoon-fed. There is, and I've heard this argument a lot, there is... A, there was a slight growing movement within the Linux community that they want Linux to be the new Windows. They want, so you switch it on, go straight into a GUI. There's, you don't need to uh, touch the command line at all. Everything is point and click. And and, and so really, if you, if you introduce new users to that, then there is no difference between that and Windows, except Windows has more games that perhaps the users want to play or, or other support that they haven't got in Linux. So there's no difference. You're not a Windows user is just going to switch on the computer, is going to get on with the work, as you should, if that's what you want a computer for. You know, at the end of the day, the tools, but is not going to learn anything other than perhaps the word processor they use or anything else. They don't understand the fundamentals of the operating system. They don't know how to fix problems. So when something goes wrong, boom, you know, it's tech support. Hello, 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 my computer will start. And that is fine because that's really, and it's the same with Mac as well. It, that, that's what that, that particular, it's what it's aimed at. You know, not so much tech savvy. With Linux, kind of more tech savvy, or, or at least it used to be. And... But I think that it's starting to go in a direction that perhaps mimics Windows. You know, here we go. We've uh, No one knows how it works, uh, what to do if it breaks, because they're encouraged never to sort of like either ask or delve into the command line because everything is mouse-driven. FreeBSD is not like that. What I love about FreeBSD is there is... You do get, there are some derivatives of FreeBSD, and that's that's the correct term rather than uh, distribution, but the derivatives of FreeBSD. They're, f they're derived from FreeBSD, but they're not FreeBSD. They're FreeBSD under the hood, but because there is only one FreeBSD and the rest, are whatever they are, they are based on FreeBSD, but not FreeBSD. It's, it's, it may seem like semantics, but it's an important distinction. 
So say, for instance, you have Nomad BSD or Ghost BSD. No, and yes, there are other ones. There's Hello System, etc. But I don't until they reach version one. I'm not going to include them. They are very far on in development and doing an excellent job. But I want to keep it just to two ones that I've released. That's Nomad BSD and Ghost BSD. They there is the facility there for them to use the command line, but the overall objective of them is. It's user-friendly, starts up with a GUI, and you don't have to touch it. And, and that's fine. But the great thing is, is that it's there if you need it to be. You know, the, the command line and getting your all hands into the uh, learning the commands, etc. They're not actively shying away from it. And FreeBSD itself, the vanilla FreeBSD, is very much command line. Because when, uh, when you first start it up, there, there isn't any kind of GUI at all. You know, you either, you get, you obviously log in, and then that's it. So you have to learn some command, otherwise you're not going to get very far with it. And I think, I think for a lot of people, that can be off-putting, which is a shame, because they're that used to either the Windows point and click, or they're used to, as it is now, the uh, Linux sort of like uh, wanting to be a point and click. And so even, even perhaps if someone's managed to migrate themselves off Windows, they're a bit more tech savvy in the... They've installed Linux, and it's like, okay, but because <clears throat> there's never really any uh, need to go into the command line, it's like, so I'm going to try FreeBSD because they've heard about it, they've put FreeBSD on, boom. What do I do? This is hard. Learning curve difficult. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think FreeBSD should never lose that. Like I say, you've got Nomad BSD and GhostBSD to fulfill that need, if you wish, and which can be a fantastic gateway entry into FreeBSD because it uses the same underlying uh, technology. But with FreeBSD, you bum into the command line and you have to learn. And so it's you will learn if you want to carry on. I mean, if you want, if you want to scuttle back to Linux or Windows, then you can. Um, and I, when I first started out FreeBSD, I did. I'd load up FreeBSD. I was like, what's going on? I'd go back to Linux. Or then next time we'd try it again and I'd load up FreeBSD and then it'd be like, oh, what does this do? And I'd learn the commands and then I'd go back to Linux. And very, very slowly over a period of time, I, uh, I stayed and I learned. And eventually I swapped over because I thought that this was fun and it had the same spirit of adventure and curiosity as I had with the old 8-bit computers. And I, I loved that. Don't get me wrong, I loved the time with the Amigas and the Atari STs and all them. They were great times. You know, you, you go from um, command line, sort of like basic uh, 8-bits to uh, a, a GUI-driven operating system like uh, Amiga OS was and uh, STOS. But here was FreeBSD and it felt like the 8-bit and I liked it. So I stayed and I learned the commands. So when you use FreeBSD, you're, you're feeding yourself. You're not being spoon-fed. You know, here it is like wizards, like one of the commentators, wizards uh, to do this and a wizard to do it. No, no, no. You, you learn. You read up. You read the manuals. You get in there. You change things. And if you make a mess, then fine. You restart. Do it again. Or learn the command for your boot environments in which you just roll back to before you mess things up, which is immensely useful. One of the greatest things ever. So like I say, it, it goes on to number five, where it grows as you grow. So the operating system grows. You develop, um, you add bits to it. You add a, uh, you know, a GUI to it. Add a desktop environment. And as you're doing that, you're learning how to do that. So the operating system is growing. You're growing. And ultimately, you know, the limit to what you can do with FreeBSD is limited to yourself. Now, me, I'm not a programmer. I wish I was. I never got past basic. Well, I, I understood basic a lot, but I never really went past that. That was like 30 or 40 years ago. And to me, basic is, it, it, it makes common sense. I can look at a basic program and think, yeah, I understand that. When I look at C++ and all that, I ain't I got a clue. But if you did, if you did have a clue and you wanted to get into programming, FreeBSD would allow you to do that too. So imagine that. Imagine I can do, I can write some basic bash scripts, etc. But imagine if you, if you, you wouldn't the program you could just like you got this basic uh, bare operating system and you could just build yourself a new desktop environment if if you were so inclined so yeah it can grow as you grow and the limits being yourself and that's very much true if you want an operating system which doesn't hold you back doesn't limit you won't spy on you it's free will use your hardware whether it's new or old will help you learn and grow as a person then you can't do any worse than FreeBSD. And that's why I use it. And that's why I recommend it when I can. Anyway, thanks for watching this very, or listening rather, very wordy, heavy video. And I'll catch you next time. 
This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.